Before proceeding, we highly recommend that you perform firmware updates and do a full functionality check on the camera to make sure everything works correctly. Make sure your battery is fully charged. Make sure your work area is clean, well lit, and free from dust. It's important to note that none of the operations you'll be performing require force. Patience and a gentle touch are all that is required. We don't recommend switching back and forth between the ribcage and the camera's original configuration as it will create stress and wear on the components. Now let's take a look at the tools you'll need. A set of precision screwdrivers, a roll of electrical tape, some isopropyl alcohol, which is commonly available at pharmacies, and some silicone heat paste. The following are optional and not required for the assembly. If you want to use the original camera button instead of ours, you will need some tweezers and super glue, an air puffer, thin double-sided tape, and some lens cleaning tools if you need to clean the image sensor. The first thing you need to do is remove any accessories, the SD card, and the battery. To remove the front cover, use a miniature flathead screwdriver. Gently insert the tool under the upper right-hand corner of the cover, above the lens, and start working your way around the camera. The faceplate is attached with tape and plastic tabs. Pull the faceplate off and set it aside. Remove the button and save it for optional use later in the project. Next we'll remove the four corner screws. Note that the screw on the lower left is shorter than the others. We recommend leaving the top left screw until last. When removing the top left screw, make sure it doesn't catch on the corner of the LCD display. Undo it slowly and move the top of the screw around the LCD glass if required. Be sure to save all four screws for use later. To remove the interior parts, gently insert a screwdriver under the housing next to the HDMI port and lift the housing slightly over the ports. Grip the lens and work the PCB board assembly out of the housing by gently rocking the lens assembly back and forth until the internal aluminum plate and PCB board assembly is free. Swing the assembly down gently. There are internal connectors located along the edge of the board. Take care not to put stress on them. Remove the four screws holding the image sensor onto the rear of the assembly and set them aside. Gently pull up to disconnect the connector joining the image sensor and main board. Use your fingernail or a small screwdriver to remove the small piece of dark tape covering the ribbon connector at the base of the assembly. Take care not to damage the flexible ribbon at the bottom. Now we'll disconnect the ribbon. Use a tiny screwdriver to gently lift up on the black locking tab. Use your screwdriver to pull the connector free, taking care not to scratch or puncture the ribbon.
Remove the two screws located below the lens. Be sure to save them as they will be needed later. Remove the screw holding the main board onto the aluminum plate. Save it for use later in the project. Gently lift up on the board to separate it from the aluminum plate and angle it down in a way to remove it. Don't force the board. This step may require a little patience to get the angle just right. Fold the assembly over and lay it back onto the housing. In some cases, the board can be difficult to remove. If that's the case in your project, you can remove the screws from the I.O. board pictured and angle the board slightly so there's more room to remove the main circuit board. Make sure you replace the screws once the board is free. Remove the tape covering the ribbon connector on the upper left. Flip up the locking tab that holds in the remaining ribbon connector. In some cases this ribbon may have already come free during the previous steps, or may come out when you pull off the tape. Pop off the light colored plastic connector by gently pulling up on the right edge with your screwdriver. Gently pull out the mainboard assembly to remove it from the housing. Remove the three screws holding in the lens assembly. Pull out the lens to remove it. We'll prepare the lens for use in the rib cage in a separate tutorial. Now let's remove the LCD button strip. It's important to note that this is a delicate part, so patience is key during this step. Never pry or force this part. We'll need the isopropyl alcohol and a small applicator for this step. In this case, we're using a plastic stir stick. Locate the two plastic parts and the clamp pictured. Note that they may also be white or orange. Place the plastic bridge over the left side of the LCD display with the smaller tab at the top edge. This should be placed as far left as possible while still having both ends touching the aluminum plate. Place a few drops of alcohol on the white LCD backing against the aluminum plate. Place the rectangular plastic part over the white backing. Open the clamp and carefully place it over the plastic parts so there is even pressure and slowly release it. You'll probably notice a small dark patch appear on the LCD. This is normal and will disappear shortly. Apply a few drops of alcohol under the top right corner of the LCD display. You should notice the dark patch on the screen slowly fade as the adhesive releases. Add more alcohol as needed. This step is usually fairly quick, however on rare occasions the LCD may require up to 15 minutes before it fully releases. Never attempt to force or pry the display off. Remove the clamp and plastic parts. Gently lift the LCD display to verify that it's free. If the LCD remains stuck, even slightly, it's best to use a little more alcohol and wait for it to be completely free before attempting to remove it. Gently peel off the lower portion of the button strip, taking care not to tear or bend it sharply. Wipe off the remaining alcohol. The rest should evaporate after a few minutes. The camera teardown is now complete. Now let's install the mod kit. Let's get started by opening up your kit and removing the contents. For a full list of parts, 
please view the PDF instructions listed on our support page. If you experience any difficulty or have questions during your install, please contact support. Be sure to include your support code for the fastest possible service. It's better to ask first if you're not certain about any of the steps. If you want to use the original button instead of ours, place a dab of superglue on the back and add the button standoff with a pair of tweezers. Now let's start the assembly by separating the metal plates using the L keys provided. Now we'll insert the main board into the PCB plate. Remove any of the gray heat transfer material that remains. Place a small dab of heat paste on each of the large chips. Place the dab on the left side of the largest chip as shown. Place the board onto the PCB plate and fasten it into place with the PCB board screw that you removed earlier. Check the corners to make sure the board sits flat and is properly aligned before tightening the screw. Now we'll insert one of the original screws back into the lower edge of the plate. It's important not to over tighten the screw in this step. Next, Take the flexible jumper from your kit. Carefully bend the jumper as shown. Insert the left side of the jumper through the board where the lens assembly was located. Connect the flexible jumper to the main board, taking care to align the connectors prior to exerting any pressure to seat them together. They should click together easily when properly aligned. Take the rear housing of the camera and carefully bend the flexible ribbon so that it's straight and extends out as far as possible. Make sure the locking tab is up. Carefully insert the ribbon into the socket on the main board as shown. If it doesn't go in all the way, we can correct that in a moment. Flip down the plastic locking mechanism to keep it in place. Next, insert the light colored plastic connector into its socket. Carefully align it and click it into place with a gentle push. Now it's time to connect the LCD button strip. Gently flip open the assembly, taking care not to dismount your connections. Orient the LCD so that it's face up and insert the ribbon connector into the socket on the main board as shown. Flip down the locking mechanism to hold it in place. 
Next, angle the board assembly back into the housing, taking care not to stress or disconnect the connections. You may need to gently lift the edge of the housing with a flat screwdriver to get the assembly in. Push it together until it clicks into place and the USB and HDMI ports are properly aligned with the housing. Next, secure the assembly with the four corner screws. Note that the shortest screw must be used on the lower left. Gently tighten the screws until the plate contacts the housing, making sure that the edge of the housing stays parallel with the edge of the plate all the way around. Once snug, additional tightening is not required and may cause the housing to bend. If you start to see this happen, loosen the screws as needed. Remove the backing from one side of the double-sided tape provided. Place the tape on the back of the LCD. You can optionally add a thin piece of double-sided tape to the rounded button socket. Tuck the flexible jumper under the edge of the aluminum plate. Remove the backing from the tape on the LCD display. If you use a tool to do this, make sure not to scratch the back of the display. Now is a good time to check your connections. If they aren't fully inserted, take a moment to make the proper adjustments. Take the aluminum cover plate and carefully align the LCD screen with the hole in the plate. Slowly put the cover plate in position over the PCB plate, making sure that the LCD display is properly aligned. Once in place, gently press on the screen with your finger to stick it in place. Remove the cover plate for use in a few minutes. Stick down the button strip. Once the LCD screen is stuck down, we recommend that you don't attempt to remove it. To avoid damage, we also recommend that you don't apply any pressure to the left and right edges of the screen when handling the unit during assembly. Pop the flexible jumper back out from under the aluminum plate. Now we'll insert the image sensor into the cover plate. Take the sensor board and very gently bend the ribbon back as pictured. Insert the sensor into the socket on the back of the plate. Take care not to touch the glass sensor, but if you do, it can be clean later. Secure the sensor board in place with the four short black screws supplied. Tighten the four screws slowly in a crisscross fashion. The screws should be snug only, do not over tighten. Cut a piece of electrical tape and apply it to the back of the sensor board as shown. Cut the tape as closely as possible to the sensor size, so that the plates fit together properly in the next step. Next we'll connect the image sensor to the flexible jumper. Cut a piece of electrical tape and apply it to the back of the flexible jumper as shown. The tape should extend slightly past the jumper on the right side. 
Gently bend the sensor ribbon around your finger so that the connector faces up. For this step, you will require something thin and rigid, such as a small ruler or a credit card. Here we're using a plastic gift card. Turn the camera on its side and slide the card behind the flexible jumper. Take the cover plate and image sensor and carefully align the two connectors. Push down with your finger to connect them. Use patience and care with this step. Using too much force may damage the connectors. If required, use a screwdriver to push the connectors fully into place. You should feel them click together once properly mated. Fold the electrical tape over the connectors. If required, add a small piece to cover the rest of the connector backing. Next we'll attach the faceplate. Push the ribbon connectors into the camera and tuck them under the edge of the aluminum plate. Make sure it sits straight and not at an angle. From right to left, gently fit the cover plate into position while keeping an eye on the sensor ribbon. It should keep a nice curve and not develop any sharp bends or kinks. Gently press down to put the cover plate in place. The flexible jumper is somewhat rigid so you will feel some resistance as you put it in place. Use one of the small socket head screws from the kit to screw the plates together in the center. Now it's time for a quick test. Insert the battery into the housing and press the power button. If the camera powers on and you are able to switch modes, everything is good. If the camera doesn't power on or you can't change modes, ensure your battery is charged, double check your connections and try again. Be sure to check that the side and top buttons work. If the side and top buttons don't work, verify that the ribbon on the side of the board is properly connected. Now that we fit the parts together, turn the camera over and insert the plastic button as shown. Make sure nothing is caught between the plates if they won't go together. Use one of the small socket head screws from the kit to screw the plates together in the center. Continue adding the remaining screws to the cover plate until it sits snug and flat. Now is a good time to clean the sensor if required. For the best image quality, make sure it's clean and free from dust and fingerprints. A lens pen or microfiber lens cloth usually works quite well. If using lens cleaning fluid, never spray it directly on the sensor. Always spray the cloth first and then wipe clean, followed by a puffer to remove any tiny particles. Never use tissues as they will leave a lot of small debris. Now we'll configure the camera for M12 lenses. If you'd like to configure the camera for CS and C mount lenses, you can skip to section 18. Add a steel set screw to the M12 ring using the smallest L key. Now we'll install the IR cut filter. If you want to use the camera for night vision, or if you plan to use M12 lenses with built-in IR cut filters, 
you can leave the filter out. Take the rubber O-ring and drop it into the socket on the back of the M12 ring. Next, take one of the filters from the kit and place it on top. The IR cut filters shown are laminated under plastic, but many kits now have the filters in small envelopes. Take care to keep the filter clean by handling it by the edges. Align the ring and filter to the holes on the front of the camera, making sure that the set screw is located on the upper right. Take the four medium-sized socket screws from your kit. The long screws should be used on the left and right, and the short screws on the top and bottom. Take care not to use the long screws on the top and bottom, as they can potentially cause damage. Now let's add a lens. We recommend connecting your camera to an HDMI monitor for this step. Take your favorite M12 lens and screw it into the socket until it's roughly in focus. Lightly engage the set screw. This makes it easier to make fine adjustments to the focus. Once you're happy with the sharpness of the image, tighten the set screw until snug to lock everything in place. Your camera mod is now complete. If you'd like to see how to configure the camera to accept CS or C-mount lenses, please view the next step. Now we'll set up the camera to accept CS and C-mount lenses. Add a steel set screw to the standard M12 ring using the smallest L key. Now we'll install the IR cut filter. If you want to use the camera for night vision, or if you plan to use M12 lenses with built-in IR cut filters, you can leave the filter out. Take the rubber O-ring and drop it into the socket on the back of the M12 ring. Next, take one of the filters from the kit and place it on top. Take care to keep the filter clean by handling it by the edges. Align the ring and filter to the holes on the front of the camera, making sure that the set screw is located on the upper right. Take the four medium-sized socket screws from your kit. The long screws should be used on the left and right, and the short screws on the top and bottom. Take care not to use the long screws on the top and bottom, as they can potentially cause damage. Some M12 lenses can be added to this socket. If your lens won't focus, you can use the alternative M12 mount in the previous steps. You can also buy an M12 to CS adapter. Add the two remaining set screws to the CS mounting ring. Thread the CS ring onto the camera.
Unscrew the plastic cap from your C-mount ring and add the ring to the camera. Use the plastic cap to keep the sensor clean when no lens is attached. Connect the tripod mounting plate with the large screws and L key. Now you're all done. Add your battery, SD card, accessories, and your favorite lenses. Have fun shooting.